If I see or hear the words diversity, equality, or inclusivity in any opening pitch or statement from a game dev about a game that they're working on, I'm out. I will not support that game ever. Not now, in the future, or ever. Because it tells me that that game dev values social politics so high that they mention it before the game's functions, features, or any gameplay. Which to me means that they're leveraging it as a cultural marketing tool. And I think that's taking a crowbar to a door that isn't even locked to begin with. More and more games are coming out of the West that tout inclusivity, but really, it's exclusivity. Meaning we only have a cast of boring and ugly character designs, basic and uninteresting silhouettes, very standard proportions, whose entire core and design ethos seems to be, it's just a normal person. Now, unless you're making a drama or a narrative about ordinary people doing ordinary things, kind of like a slice of life game, I get it. I get it if you're doing that, it makes sense. But otherwise, what are, you, what are you trying to do? What are, you, what are you trying to say? What are you getting at? Because it's not an art style. It's not art direction. It's unimaginative. It's cheap and it's boring. And I don't understand how multi-million dollar budget triple A games don't realize that this is a trend and it's going to wear off. Especially if you expect to compete at the very, very pointy end of game dev. If I can see any of your main cast of characters out while I'm doing my groceries, just some random person in the shopping mall, I hope that you are not making the next triple A quality action adventure game. No, because it's not good enough. It's just not good enough. An amazing actor or actress can take a mediocre script and raise it to become something phenomenal using their skill their creativity, their experience, they bring something to it and can elevate it. But a mediocre actor or actress or a poor actor or actress can take the best script ever written and it will be dirt. It doesn't go the other way. So your main cast of characters need to be something special. They need to have that little sprinkle on top that rises them above normality in order to draw people in and keep them engaged. And their physicalities and overall attractiveness is a big element of that. But it seems like conventional attractiveness is becoming less and less of a consideration in Western game devs, which is a terrible idea from both the creative and financial perspectives. Sex sells. And people love pretty things. They love them. They love hunky dudes and pretty girls. And there's nothing wrong with that. And whenever I sense some kind of entertainment that is trying to make me feel bad for liking that, I will never support financially, ever. Because it's perfectly normal. It is 100% perfectly normal and it's totally fine. We are all of us genetically programmed to gravitate towards attractive things. Things that we look at and go, oh, we like that and we gravitate towards them. It's built into us. So trying to fight against that is stupid. Now Baldur's Gate 3 is a perfect all-encompassing example of diversity and inclusivity, but the cast is conventionally attractive. And as the player, you have the option to create another character that's equally as attractive, more attractive, or even far less attractive. You can create kind of a monstrous looking person in that character creator as well. So the whole range is there. It's all available. So Larian is actually a great example of a developer that deserves to be labeled as inclusive. In all of the marketing material that came out for Baldur's Gate 3, I never felt like they were trying to force this whole DEI angle on me. It was never at the forefront. Was it brought up? Was it mentioned? Of course it was, because that's the state of our current social media that you know everyone's kind of talking about. Of course these things come up, but I think they handled it with grace and they executed it perfectly. It's just in the game. It doesn't need to be a talking point. It doesn't need to be the focal point. And you as the player get the option to go, oh, I like that, or nah, 
I don't like that at all. Get this guy out of my team. That is phenomenal. Let's try to paint a completely different picture here. We've got a multi-million dollar AAAA budget game. We've got phenomenal amounts of worlds, alien worlds, wild planets. We've got exotic plant life. We've got distorted realities. We've got alien hybrid creatures, massive elemental biodiversity, yeah? But we've got Timmy as the lead character and Karen as the leading lady. It's just pathetic. It doesn't make sense, especially when you could have this. Do you see how much more interesting these faces are? They're just generic people executed way better. You've spent all this budget, all this creativity on literally everything else in the game except the most important part, which are the main cast of characters. How does that make any sense at all? Again, this comes around to the fact that I personally was a character artist in video games and film for about 18 years. I did this for a job. So when I see a super generic looking face, specifically human head, that's really what I'm zooming in on. A very generic looking human head someone on the character team just literally went to turbo squid or they went to a, a website called 3d people and they just downloaded a scan of some random dude off the street that that company paid him like a hundred bucks to scan his head and they just grabbed that head and they were just like yep this is the new mechanic for our game look i'm going to show you guys how easy this actually is we're just going to type in 3d scan store metahuman find the metahuman identities list click on that open up the web page here we are find our head find one that kind of acts as a good starting point pay like 30 bucks download it dude you know what just looking through it wait a second who does that look like veil vale. star wars outlaws dude holy shit let's have a look here so as a professional artist that I could take this head model, metahuman identity female 46, and with a probably an hour or two's work, I could turn that into veil. This is the point I'm trying to make. It's just basic level shit. A trained character artist could do this very, very quickly. And that's not indicative of main character kind of effort. And I'm like, this is terrible. And I get that from the public's point of view, you guys probably don't notice this as much as I do because I know what it looks like. And I'm telling you, I see this everywhere. It's often used for background characters, 100%. When you need like 100 people, 200 people to fill out like a city block, you do that 100% to kind of like get them all in there, just fill out people and characters you just run past or drive past that are just in the background totally fine i am not talking about those characters i'm talking about the main cast people who have a lot of voice dialogue people that the main character needs to interact with while moving through the story those people need a lot more attention a lot more care and they need artists working on them to enhance them elevate them above normality let me give you guys a little pro tip if you find a game and you're like wow this game actually looks really good Look at the environments. Look how amazing everything in this game looks. But then you see the actual main characters and the faces look really generic. You can see it too. Just think to yourself, what the hell is going on here? They've put so much effort into literally everything else in the game, except for the one thing that you and I and all of us are supposed to identify with. And to top it all off, the thing that I find the most strange and bizarre about all of this is, is that this genericness, this boring basicness is generally leaning mostly on the female cast of characters in these games. That's really strange. Why is that? It, it makes it really obvious that there's something else at play here. Now, once you start getting into examples, man, things can just go off the rails really quick, right? Because all of this is subjective. What I find attractive could be different from what you find attractive. And that's different from what your friends find attractive. So it's all kind of like jumbled. But I'm trying to speak generally here. You got to remember, game devs are making something for the masses. And in order to succeed, they need to cater to the masses. 
it's totally fine if they want to cater to the minorities. There's nothing wrong with that. But they also have to realize that if they want to cater to the minorities, their potential income and revenue also shrinks. And nobody likes shrinkage, am I right? So then let's get specific. Star Wars Outlaws. Let's take a look at the main cast. Vale Tormund, one of the best bounty hunters in the Outer Rim, right? Think about that. The outfit, pretty good. I can't really complain about the outfit. Looks decent. It looks like it fits a bounty hunter. But the face? She has no outstanding features at all. There is nothing about this face that says to me, oh, main character. She just looks like a background character. All the features are very generic perfectly rounded and soft there's no history on that face rooster trace supposedly an amazing mercenary outfit pretty good looks like a mercenary but the face just a generic kind of middle-aged asian woman again no distinguishing features just like some random person off the street background character silo rovac the best mechanic that we can come up with to fix our speeder. If I showed you that character right there, you would never guess in a million years that she was a mechanic. This whole thing, outfit from head to toe, mechanic, nope. Generic background character, 100%. That's a nobody right there. And once again, generic, super generic, random background character face. There's nothing about it that looks unique or gives off an important character kind of vibe. Lady Kira. Oh man, this is a big one, dude. This was their opportunity to home run it. Amelia Clark. She's very, very conventionally beautiful. This was their opportunity to put a main character into the game and have her really like elevate things, just lift things up. But instead, they downplayed it. She doesn't really even look like Amelia Clark. It's one of those things where it's like, is it her? Is it not her? It's kind of looks like the wish version of Amelia Clark. And don't forget, she's a crime lord boss. This is Han Solo's partner. Critical character. Like absolutely critical. Isla Bren. I just, I, I just personally find it extremely difficult to believe that a 55 year old woman is like the best thief that we can find to teach us sneaking skills. It's so far beyond the realms of, of believability. It just again this decision doesn't make any sense whatsoever. I'm gonna learn to sneak around an imperial base and my teacher is somebody that needs a hip replacement. You know what I mean, dude? Like it, it just, or has like back problems every day, dude. Like, and once again, look at that face. Super generic. It's literally like you can see this person at your local grocery store, man. Even the main character, Kay Bess, who is based on the actress Humbly Gonzalez, it doesn't even look like her. And Humbly Gonzalez is very attractive. It's almost like, they downplayed the attractiveness, which makes no sense for a leading lady. It, it, it makes no sense. If anything, you want to enhance it. You know what? I asked my partner how she would feel if I put her into a game and I attached her name to that character, but I made her look uglier. I downplayed her attractiveness. How would she feel about that? And she was like, absolutely not. Nope. And I say that with, with special care around like actually scanning an actor or actress's face because even when you just literally scan into a 3D model and you put that 3D model into a game engine, it doesn't quite look like the actor or actress. Not quite. It needs an artist to get in there and, and kind of refine things and pump a few things up and squish a few things down. It requires that touch to really push it into the place where, holy shit, it's that person. Now, I don't want to seem like I'm picking on Star Wars Outlaws again. It's just, it's at the forefront of my mind because I've just finished playing it. But right after playing Star Wars Outlaws, I actually jumped into playing Far Cry 5 for the first time. And holy shit, the difference between the characters' faces is staggering. Far Cry 5 was made in 2018. That shit's six, seven years old. And the characters' faces are light years better. And don't forget, the premise of those same characters in Far Cry 5 are supposed to be generic, ordinary, everyday people. 
they aren't legendary mechanics or legendary thieves or have some kind of like name attached to their their jobs like high ranking mercenary or anything this is just tim and bob from down the road man yet they are elevated so high above that they are main characters it's so easy to see it right there on the screen they have interesting faces they're not generic at all i don't know guys maybe i'm just talking a bunch of bullshit what do you guys think about all of this kind of stuff man i, I know you've heard my take on everything but this is just me downloading. I'm also kind of including behind the scenes conversations that I've had with a bunch of my game developer friends, with other artists in the film and games industry. They all know exactly what I'm talking about and they've all got their own experiences with this thing happening inside their own studios. So it's definitely a thing. But what do you guys think? And once again, thank you everybody for your support. Thank you to all of my patrons, all of my subscribers here on YouTube and all of my subscribers on Twitch. There's links to all of that stuff down below. Thank you guys very much. I'll see you on the next one.